Welcome to another episode of Field Phone Ops. Today we're going to look at an EE108 field telephone. So here we go. And here we go. This is an EE108 telephone, or as it said in Boston, 108. These were manufactured during World War II as part of the left Soviet Union. So these were basically built as export models and handed out, given to the Russians. Basically it's based on a EE8 telephone. Got the same hand crank that an E8 has on it and same bell in it. Um, it's sound powered though, so it's basically a cheapened up version of a uh, of a TP3. This is not the original handset, go figure. It uses a TS10 handset. This is the handset that came with it right here. Uh, there's no markings on it, figuring it was an export model. It did have this push to talk on. I wish this would work, but it doesn't. I'm going to hang on to it because if I can eventually find uh, speaker elements in it, these are really, really weak right now. I'll replace it and try using it again. So I ended up going ahead and putting a standard TS-10 on it, which it works good with. Okay, we'll go ahead and we'll compare it to a TP-3. This is basically a cheapened version of a TP-3, basically a cheapy export model. So here we go. Binding post, just like the TP-3, except it has this extra binding post that has a ground on it. This phone actually has a lightning arrestor built into it as a safety feature. Um, handset connects here, handset connect there. Um, all this has in it is a bell for making phone calls. So if you call this, it's got the standard bell that a uh, uh, EE8 has in it, uh, no volume control. The only volume control is to either go inside there and pack the bell with cotton or a handkerchief or something to, to dull it or take the bell out completely. Um, the TP3 actually has a selector switch right here that allows you to sw switch between the uh, light or the bell. So that's the, the main thing. So basically this was a cheapened up version. The uh, TP3 also has the spot right here where you could plug in another handset where the PE 108 does not. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead. We'll go ahead and power it down, and I'll hook them up, and we'll make some phone calls. Okay, I'm going to make a few calls between the phones. I'm a little disappointed. My generator on my TP3 is not working, so I'm not going to be able to ring this way. I know this ringer works as I tried with an EE8 when I first bought it. But we'll go ahead and ring the other way and do some voice checks. So we'll go ahead and we'll call the actual TP3. There you go, get an idea. Same ringer that the uh, that the, uh, the TB3 and the E8 has in it. We'll go ahead and I'll do a voice check. Test one, two, three. Test one, two. Test one, two, three. Okay, loud and clear. Or as loud as clear as uh, TS10 uh, handsets can make it, and uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, the range on this E108, they said in their instructional manual, was 9 to 12 miles. I think that's being a little bit on the, uh, I want to say, uh, optimistic side. I don't think more than 4 or 5. Like I said, uh, all the work done on it is done by the sound-powered TS-10 handsets. There's no batteries or anything or amplifiers, so that's how it is. Like I said, uh, E108. Uh, Manufactured in the uh, 1940s, this was 1943, actually as part of the Lend-Lease program to get to the, uh, the Soviet Union during World War II. It was basically a cheapened up copy of a, a TP3 phone right here. And thanks for watching.